And just wait for Michelle a few minutes. It's recording now. Hi, Hala, how are you? Say that again. I was saying hello to Sister Hala, one of the members of the assembly. Abdallah, do you know if Earl's going to be able to make it today? I do not know. Uh, I'll text him. Hi, everyone. Hello, Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, so we're at the dentist's office or we're getting ready to leave. Okay. So I'm making you and Abdallah the co-host because I'm worried that I might um, lose reception on the route. And so I've also recorded. So I think if I give you co-host, it'll be recording on your end too. That way we can make sure the meeting Perfect. gets posted at least until I get into the office. So I would just ask that you keep an eye on the attendees because sometimes a few folks come in that way. They just Absolutely. hop on that way. Absolutely, yes. And welcome Abdallah, thank you for being here. Um, nice to see you. <laughs> thank you, I'm also in the car, so. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, this is life. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm parked, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, good. Um, Jennifer, just so I know, so you, so attendees, how do I know if an attendee has been let in? So they show up in the attendees, but how do I know that they can hear us and that they're here? So the attendees can hear us, but if you, um, there's like a dot, 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 I believe over the attendees. Do you see the, att there's two attendees now. Yes, and I it, do. And it should say like promote to panelist. And so once you do that, it should bring them in. And if they're just commenting during public comment, then I just enable them to speak. Okay. And perfect. then I disable that when they're done speaking as opposed to making them um, co-hosts. I mean, uh, panelists, sorry. Perfect. Okay. And so I will see all attendees that come in. There's not like a, another place that they come and then go to attendees. No, I just saw Yvonne. Did she hop in? Yeah, she's yeah. here. So I'm going to go because then I'll be back to the office faster and Thank be able to link in that way. Great. Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to see you. <laughs> um, so we don't have a quorum yet. And I did hear, or do we? We do. 
we do have a quorum. <laughs> we have four. Yes. I wasn't counting myself for a second. Um, I did hear for Alexa from Alexis that um, she will not be able to join us today. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly uh, just text Dr. Shabazz and see just to give him, you know, let him let him know we're on here in case he forgot. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna call the meeting to order and let me just grab my agenda here. Um, all right. So I am calling the April 11th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly to order at 1119. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So let's do a quick check just to make sure that everybody can be heard and can hear us. And we'll start with you, Dr. Rhodes. I'm here. Excellent. And Hala? I can hear you all. Great. We can hear you too. And Yvonne? I'm here. Okay, great. Um, so let's see here. We are going to just maybe, I'm going to review our agenda quickly and then, so maybe giving Dr. Shabazz another minute to get here, if he'll be coming before we welcome our presenters. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. So the items that we really need to focus on today are we have two presenters um, and that's uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Devra Jacobson and Jeff Gold and they're coming to present and talk to us about the Stolen Beam series that they created um, and a potential um, partnership with the Jones Library um, in promoting and offering that event to Amherst community members. And then we do have to uh, go over the Mass Humanities Grant, review the LOI and make sure we're ready. It does have to be submitted by 11.59 p.m. this evening. So that's a definite. I'd like to be able to review the um, sort of actually get a sense from you all about the Black African American census that we had a presentation on last week. And then uh, we do have our community survey. I think we need a little bit more time on that. I've heard from some members um, still waiting on some questions there. So before anything else, any questions on any of the agenda items? Okay, great. So I, so Dr. Shabazz, I think is about to join us. And in the meantime, um, hang on one second. I'm gonna welcome our guests into the room. So um, Devorah and Jeff, I don't normally do this. So just give me a second. I think, <laughs> I think I'll be able to get you in here. Uh, all right, let's see. Oh, there's Rabbi Jacobson and let's see, there you are. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> and I think, let's see what happened with Jeff here. He should be coming in in a second. Welcome, Jeff. Here I am. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, okay, so I'd love it if we can just give about 10 more seconds for Dr. Shabazz to get here, um, because nobody wants to uh, have to say things twice, especially if they've prepared. Um, so 
Um, we'll just give him another second to get here. How are you both doing? <laughs> Good. Uh, I'm doing okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Been a, been a bit of a ride for me recently, but I, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Wish you Thanks, good. Michelle. Yeah. Thanks for asking. That's so yeah. kind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's always nice to have guests um, at our meetings. <laughs> Michelle, maybe you can introduce everyone or um, approve the minutes while you're waiting for Dr. Shabazz. Yeah. I'm going to wait for introductions um, just until Dr. Shabazz gets here, but I think approving the minutes is possible um, because I don't see him yet. So we have three sets of minutes to approve November 10th, the December 2nd, and the December 16th. So thank you, Jennifer. Is everybody, has everybody had a chance to review the minutes that were in the packet and feel prepared to vote on those? Okay, great. Dr. Rhodes, you good with voting on the minutes? Definitely good. Okay, and Yvonne? Yes. Okay, good. All right. I'm <laughs> Sorry, just going to, nope, I'm going to just go ahead and Jennifer, I can vote them. We can vote them all at once. Is that right? On one motion? Yes, you can. Okay, perfect. So I am going to move to approve the meeting minutes for November 10th, 2021, December 2nd, 2021, and December 16th. 2021. Is there a second? Hala Lord second. Excellent. Thank you, Hala. And we'll do a roll call vote. Um, Yvonne? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <Excellent>. Yes. <laughs> it's okay, Hala. Lord, I. Dr. Rhodes? Lord, I. Okay. And I am also an I. All right. So those are Jennifer, did you get that? <laughs> Those all passed. Um, Got all right. It. All right. And I think we have Dr. Shabazz here. Hang on. Here we go. He's going to come in. There he is. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Shabazz. Hello. He's going to oh. have to get rid of something here. Yeah. All right. Good. Oh, I think that works now. Okay. Good to see you and welcome. We just approved some meeting minutes. I heard. Okay, good. And now I am going to introduce our special guests today. Um, we have Rabbi Devor Jacobson and Jeff Gold, who are both local activists, members of the Reparations Committee of the Jewish Community Center of Amherst and the creators of the Stolen Beam series. And I just wanted to say, I've come to know them over the past couple of years doing this work and have come to know them as wonderful, caring and humble human beings, um, deeply committed to our this work of reparations, both locally and nationally. So I'm really happy to have them both here. Um, and if you recall, Probably now a couple months ago, we started to talk about um, educational uh, opportunities that we could offer to the community. And the Stolen Beam series was one of those opportunities. Um, and the syllabus has been placed in the packet a couple times now. So hopefully everyone has had an opportunity to look at that. I've personally facilitated a Stolen Beam series. Um, it was an incredibly deep and rich experience, both for myself, and I think I can speak for Matthew, who was the co-facilitator, as well as the folks that were there. Um, and it was, it was a really great, uh, not only a learning experience uh, in the way of reparations, but also a place to, have discussion about these things where that's not often, um, you don't often have that opportunity to unpack things once you've, you know, taken and taken the information in. So um, we're going to let Jeff and um, Devorah talk more about that. But I also want to mention that you'll see on the agenda 
the Jones Library is offering a stolen beam series. And when that, when Devorah brought that to my attention, I thought it would be an excellent opportunity for the AHRA to be in partnership with the Jones Library to do that. One, because I think it will be good just in terms of um, sort of the community engagement piece and what we're trying to do and the they have their constituent base and we have our constituent base and we'd be able to reach more people by having that collaboration. Um, so before I hand it over, I just wanna check in with assembly members. If you would quickly just introduce yourselves to Devorah and Jeff um, and maybe any, you might know them already, um, and then we'll hand it over and they can do any introductions they'd like to do that I didn't cover, and then we'll go from there. So maybe Dr. Shabazz, we could start with you. Hello, Milkar Shabazz. Um, me too. <laughs> and Yvonne. Hello, um, Yvonne Mendez, Amherst resident. And Irv? Irv, a longtime Amherst resident and an elected member of the uh, school committee. And Hala? Hala Lord, and I've been honored to be in some services in JCA over the past 20 years. So. All right, so I'm going to pass it over to you, um, Devora and Jeff, and um, you can take it from here. Thank you so much, everybody. It's great to be with you today, and uh, special thanks to you, Michelle. Um, uh, you know, obviously, there's so much that we feel grateful for in our partnership. So um, we did uh, want to come before you all today and talk a little bit about the Stolen Beam series. Jeff is going to really focus on that piece, the content of the Stolen Beam, and its impact on those who have. Uh, taken uh, the, cl the facilitated class. I want to just sort of lay the groundwork by um, uh, describing some of the work that we've been doing at the JCA uh, this last, these, these last two years. So since, uh, since the murder of George Floyd, uh, given the tremendous interest in activism and in uh, uh, creating a space for, uh, I'd say, increased activism at the JCA, a new racial justice uh, plank or uh, prong at the JCA was, in, was created, and that structure is called tzedek, uh, otherwise the Hebrew word for, for justice. And it was kind of an umbrella for a number of different subcommittees one of which was the reparations subcommittee. And that's, that's our committee. That's the work that we've been doing these last two years. And we were joined by 16 other members of our community, including one that I think most of you know, Michael Burkhart, who was a great source of uh, learning and guidance for us. And we decided to dedicate the first six months of our efforts together to educating ourselves, to studying together the primary sources on, on reparations uh, written by thought leaders uh, on the topic uh, throughout the country. And so we did that. We spent six months, all of us, reading kind of a deep dive into the topic of reparations. Um, and uh, in addition to that, uh, after, after that first period, that first six months, we then um, focused on internal education at the JCA. So, so we felt like we had sort of, you know, learned more over the first six months. And now we wanted to kind of bring our fellow congregants into the educational process. And so we embarked on a variety of discussions, open forums, tech studies, circulating essays on reparations to the entire community. And in addition, we um, asked our adult education committee at the JCA to uh, offer a class, which we named the Stolen Beam. And, and Jeff, I think, will say a little bit more about that title, which is taken from a passage in the Talmud, uh, in the rabbinic literature of Jewish tradition. 
And uh, so we offered this class, which was really modeled on our own study together as a committee. Um, and uh, we put out the registration information and immediately, like within a couple of days, we got 65 people who signed up. And we knew we could only really handle maybe 60, maybe 50. We, we, we didn't think we could go past 65. So at that moment, we closed the registration, but that's just to say there was an enormous amount of interest in the topic. Uh, so the Adult Education Committee uh, sponsored the class. We broke up into three sections. We had facilitators facilitating each of the sections. And we spent five weeks together with fellow congregants discussing, debating, airing, reflecting um, on this topic of reparations. In addition to that adult education offering, we engaged in advocacy at our synagogue urging the JCA Board of Directors to publicly endorse passage of HR 40. We engaged in a process and ultimately that process was successful and the Board of Directors unanimously endorsed HR 40 and is on record for doing so. We had initiated outreach with Matthew and Michelle uh, and reparations for Amherst and that, uh, that exchange and collaboration continued throughout year one. Then let me just describe briefly year two, where we went from focusing on internal work at the JCA to now external work in our local community and beyond. Because what we decided was this stolen beam series really seemed to have some merit to it. And we wondered and we wanted to see if we could disseminate it far and wide with the curriculum, with the guidelines for best practice facilitation and with the extensive bibliography that you will see within uh, the manual when, you, when you're able to take a look at it. And so we began to um, put out feelers and make phone calls and just pursue all kinds of contacts. And um, it's been a really interesting journey for us. We have now held stolen beam classes at a variety of places, interfaith, secular, um, uh, uh, in, uh, so I mentioned interfaith, secular, uh, places like the UCC Church in Longmeadow, the Pelham Library, Reparations for Amherst, Congregation B'nai Israel, Congregation Beit Ahava, uh, et cetera. We have also managed to connect with the national offices of the reform movement in Judaism and the reconstructionist movement in Judaism. So talking to people at the national level and their interest in possibly using the Stolen Beam series. And in fact, the Reconstructionist movement has used the Stolen Beam series, parts of it, to educate their board of governors. And they are currently piloting the series with at least 10 of their member congregations around the country. We have also continued to uh, uh, connect and reach out to various racial justice groups uh, locally uh, in the state and around the country, including um, uh, we have connected with Kathleen Anderson and uh, NCOBRA, the work of NCOBRA. Uh, we have connected with uh, a reform synagogue and leaders in Evanston, Illinois, uh, who were uh, very involved and continue to be involved in the reparations effort there. Um, and, uh, and we have also connected with uh, uh, King Boston and engaged in the uh, statewide reparations conversations. And in, in addition, we have connected with the Boston Workers Circle, which is doing uh, tremendous programming and advocacy on behalf of reparations. Finally, I would say the Stolen Beam series has recently been nominated for a national prize called the Dan Cedarbaum Prize offered by the Reconstructionist Movement after a leading figure in that movement. We are waiting to hear whether we have in fact won the prize, but uh, it was an honor just to be nominated. Thank you and I'll turn it over now to Jeff. 
Thank you, Devorah, and uh, hello again. It was a few months ago, I think. I can't remember exactly when when I spoke to the AHRA um, a, a number of months ago. So uh, hello, hello again. Um, uh, in the short time that I have, I'm just going to review rather quickly some of the curriculum and some of the process of the stolen beam. I'll begin with the name itself very quickly. The stolen beam is a reference to a rabbinic deliberation in an ancient Jewish text about the right thing to do when we discover that the house in which we live was built with a stolen beam. One rabbi argues that the entire house must be torn down and the beam returned. Another rabbi argues that it makes no sense to destroy the home, yet some form of acknowledgement and compensation is owed to the owners of that stolen beam. Thus the metaphor for the realization that our country was built on stolen land with stolen lives and stolen labor. To speak about the Stolen Beam curriculum and its philosophy in just a few short minutes is a mighty task, I think, but I'm gonna to try to do it, so please bear with me. The overarching goal of the Stolen Beam curriculum is perhaps sadly to offer an alternative viewpoint on American history. The curriculum includes leading thinkers like ta Coates, Nicole Hannah-Jones, Susan Neiman, William Darity and Kirsten Mullen, and Richard Rothstein, just to name a few. The purpose of this curriculum and its seminar style format is not to provide answers for the participants, but to create a safe intellectual and emotional space where participants can discuss this alternate perspective and assess at both an individual and group level, the need for reparative justice. We do this through open-ended questions and facilitators who are not only very familiar with the syllabus material, but who are also committed to the reparative process. There is also room in the stolen beam for dissent. Writers who do not fully agree, quote unquote, with the idea of reparations, who have questions about its logistics or practicalities, et cetera, as a way to examine the complexities of this issue and challenge participants in their own thinking. We have found this methodology assists individuals and the group itself to arrive at deeper meanings and understand the concepts of reparative justice, that the concepts of reparative justice are complex and compelling. The stolen beam covers American history, but like Ta Nahasi Coates' now famous essay, the stolen beam also considers the idea of spiritual renewal and it's linked to reparative justice. In past groups, we have considered multi-faith explorations of ethics and the spiritual dimension of reparations. We have found some common themes emerging from past stolen being groups, which uh, Deborah already um, alluded to, which we would hope we could rep replicate in Amherst. Often people say, why haven't I learned this before? Or, why wasn't I taught this in my own schooling? These comments appear especially relevant in these times when many school boards are in a reactive mode. Others have experienced this course as transformational, newly engaging or deepening their own commitment to racial justice work. We welcome the AHRA's questions and comments, and we thank you for allowing us to present the stolen beam to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff and Devora. Thank you. It was really helpful and rich. And so I'd like to open it up to assembly members to 
ask any questions. And again, just to put some context into this, the Stolen Beam series um, is a tool for us to use to be able to engage and educate um, mostly white folks in the community. Um, and we have this opportunity and I'll let um, Devora and Jeff tell us just in terms of timing, we have an opportunity to partner up with the Jones Library for a series that's to begin in May. Um, but we need to make sure that the assembly approves doing so. And um, I, I, I also want to point out that Jeff and Devora have offered a curriculum that is specific for AHRA to use, and that's what's in your packet. So if we go off on our own to offer this um, and engage community, we can use that curriculum. Um, and so please raise your hand if you have a question or comment that you'd like to share, and I will call on you. Okay, Irv. First, uh, Devor and Jeff, I really appreciate you uh, taking time to be with us this afternoon. Um, the whole metaphor of the stolen beam as it relates to re reparation is incredibly powerful. Um, the Talmud, uh, and all of his glory um, is a very powerful way of us intersecting with this world and with God as those who know him. The, the, I have no idea how you're using this in your work, in your seminars, in the forums that you have, that you're doing. But my goodness, just that metaphor is strong and it encapsulates really the issues, problems, contradictions, et cetera, of reparations. And uh, so I uh, really appreciate the work that you're doing and I look forward to engaging with it more fully. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Irv. Sorry, I was muted there. Um, would anyone else like to ask a question or make a comment? One, one more thing. I think, you know, one of the things that struck me and, and because I am a person who is, has, has been deeply embedded you know, in, in, involved with intellectually with Martin Buber. Mm -hmm. And that, and when I go back over the stolen beam and look back and reflect on all the things that I've read in relationship to him, the, especially I, I and thou, um, is especially powerful. So I, again, I think it's, I, I'm hoping that this series takes root in Amherst. And we'll um, talk as an assembly a little bit later about how in, in the particulars of using it um, and the possible partnership with the library. Um, I think I saw Hala's hand and then Yvonne. Um. I definitely want to um, express a deep depth of gratitude, profound gratitude for this work. Um, whenever there were times when Rabbi Weiner would show up at Goodwin, it's a black church in town after, you know, police had murdered another black person in this country and he would get up and talk about state, state sanctioned violence and how we can come together and support each other. And um, you really have, have put this into action. So I appreciate it's not just sitting in study circles, which are valuable, but this is something that's um, able to be repeated and spread. This question is maybe a little off topic, but 
do you have a vision or a plan of um, how to share this, how to get it out more? Um, is it going to be for sale on Amazon? Is it um, one of those downloadable PDFs? I, I, I would love to hear beyond Amherst, because I think we could really embrace this, how um, it can grow and live and breathe, if you don't mind answering. Go ahead, Jeff, and I'll follow. I'll I'll, I'll take a I'll, I'll take a swing at that, uh, Hala. Thank you very much for for your your comments and and Dr. Rhodes. I, I'm particularly touched by what you said. Uh, uh, Boober has been very uh, meaningful to me as 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 well um, from my college days on. So I I deeply appreciate what you um, what you just said. Um, it's not going to be sale on Amazon. At least we have no uh, no thoughts in that direction. Um, but um, what I want to say in response is that we devised and and purposely strategized um, the availability of the stolen beam um, freely, um, and that it is available to anyone or any group that would like it. Uh, and they are free to use it in and adapt it to their particular needs. Um, we see it as, and I hate to use this word, but it's the word that we've been using. We see it as a living document. Um, and indeed, we've already been through many uh, revisions uh, of it. And, and I'm sure that that as we learn more and as more writing on reparations occurs, uh, we will try to integrate and incorporate that into into the into the syllabus and into the manual. Um, our attempts at dissemination, as Devorah made reference to, has um, mostly, I think it's fair, mostly been in um, within. The larger Jewish community, it 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 finally made it to the West Coast, <laughs> um, to the San Francisco, the Public Policy Committee of the San Francisco Jewish Community Relations uh, Council um, requested it, uh, and and it's also made it to um, some uh, temples in North Carolina. So it it there has been dissemination, but. Um, you know, we're a bunch of rookies when it comes to, uh, you know, th that aspect of things, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're all local folks and e each of us has some knowledge in, 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 in different areas, but we, we, I don't think any of us is a marketing expert. <laughs> um, uh, so um, I, I think that's my best shot at answering your, your question. I, I would emphasize the flexibility of the document and, and the fact that we always wanted to just put it out there and, and not claim um, proprietary rights, if you will. And can I, um, I was concerned a little bit, so I just really want to thank you for doing it from the heart and not to profit off the stories of um, us. So thank you for that. Thanks, Hala. Appreciate the question and the interest. I would also add that uh, uh, we have asked groups that are choosing to uh, to use the Stolen Beam series uh, to consider a donation uh, to uh, reparations for Amherst. Uh, so, so we we of course don't see ourselves as uh, wanting at all to profit, but really to put put the learning into action uh, and move forward with supporting local uh, local and national reparations efforts. Um, I, I would also add, I had an interesting conversation yesterday with um, someone you all may know, Professor Tom Gardner, uh, who teaches at Westfield, and he is putting together a three-part series for our congregation on uh, the civil rights movement. Uh, Dr. Shabazz, actually, I believe you're going to be <laughs> one of the speakers for that series. We're grateful. Uh, and Tom said he had a wonderful conversation with a colleague and a friend from the movement a couple of days ago in preparation for speaking with me, uh, Professor Simmons in, um, in, uh, in Florida. She's gonna be part of this three part series. And she heard about the stolen beam from him and said, you know, I think uh, people around here would be very interested in something like that. So I, I think kind of like Jeff was saying, we're, we're still trying to figure out 
an efficient rollout for the stolen beam. And, and that's sort of why we tried to go Nash to some of the national movements, either in the Jewish tradition. I asked a colleague of mine in the UCC tradition if we could speak to or try to get to some of the folks there nationally. So um, if you have any other suggestions, we certainly would welcome that. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah and Yvonne. I just wanted to thank you for coming and for, you know, showing some genius in the work that you're doing, um, similar to what Hala said about, you know, just really getting it out there and having it be something that is not really for profit, but for the common good. And I appreciate that very much. I think that's a, a, a great thing. And I've seen a lot of um, folks, it's refreshing. I guess I'll leave it at that. I've seen you know, in, in, in the fervor of everyone to be all like PC creating things, you know, that don't seem as genuine, you know, and for the common good. And I'm glad to see this. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Cause everybody's rushing to be like, oh my God, we have to have some diversity thing. E let me say, even the groups that are diversity based, are jumping in trying to like well it has to be high profile because that's the like the in thing to do now and then it's only half thought through you know it's half baked and i've had to kind of argue with people that no you're ignoring um what um diversity and equity actually means by what you're doing you know so i'm, I'm glad to see you guys are um leaders in this in that way Thank you. Thank you so much. We um, we have received some questioning and or critique from a minority, um, but it's been interesting because um, their feeling is, you know, we're not quickly jumping into action soon enough. And our feeling, and we remain committed to the fact that we need to we need to study, we need to educate ourselves, we need to do a deep dive into this material so we can emerge more knowledgeable as we embrace and take further action. So, so education and action are for us very, very linked. Yes, indeed. Um, okay, Dr. Shabazz, did you have any comments or questions to add before we? Well, I don't wanna uh, take up too much uh, time or space. I look to um, get give more uh, specific feedback as I digest more of the um, overall um, uh, curriculum. Uh, one of the pieces I do look forward to really um, getting into sometimes watching the 32 minutes I haven't as yet is Rabbi Sharon uh, Ruse's uh, Rosh Hashanah sermon um, or, uh, to really s try to un grapple a little bit more with it all. Um, I think definitely there must be some adaptation, at least as I think about certain um, African heritage communities um, and how the story of reparations is told, how the movement is engaged with within that community. You know, the um, it, because it touches some things very deep. You know, you can't just come and say, hey, let's start reading some things. Let's start talking about some things because without knowing what all it can bring up. Um, right. You know, I'm looking, Tom know, Tom Gardner, I think knows, and any rate, the section on Selma to Montgomery that I'll be speaking on, um, you know, again, that brings up so much for me, having been across uh, the John, I'm calling it the John Lewis Bridge, but the old Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, having been met the people who were beaten, uh, besides John Lewis, whom I met as well, but other people who were who were beaten uh, severely on that on that bridge, having met the family of the man whose martyrdom sparked that movement, because originally it was supposed to be from Marion to Montgomery, Marion, Alabama, Jimmy Lee Jackson, the martyr of the cause. You know, to meet his family when I lived in Alabama, to walk the street and to go to the place where his grandmother, you know, where people were being beaten and he tried to shield their bodies from the blows of his family member. And then he gets taken and gets beaten to death. 
you know, it brings up so much. But um, the, the the only other thing I'd say is in answer to the rabbinical question is, yeah, I, I wouldn't say t burn the house down, but I guess I'm asking the question on the acknowledgement piece. You know, it's not just to pay, but it's what all goes into that acknowledgement. You know, Darity speaks of the arc. Yeah, that's right. Acknowledgement, redress, closure. And that acknowledgement piece is not just the statement passed by the council. You know, it's not just what we're doing here. It's not just whatever historical timelines, but it's how we really acknowledge in our heart, in our soul, and, um, and, and, and ways in which we continually dis display that acknowledgement and live that acknowledgement is what to me is really where if, 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 that, if that house stays up, it's gotta, be, it's gotta be in our living practice. So thank you so much and, and look forward to be engaged further down the line. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Shabazz. Um, Yvonne, I see your hand is still up. Did you have another? Okay. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Devora and Jeff, for joining us and for engaging in this conversation. And you are welcome to stay um, for the meeting. I'm going to take you into the back into the attendees, unless you have anything else you'd like to add. And then um, you'll either sort of hear our discussion here or and or I will follow up with you um, after the meeting and we can talk. Um, and I just, I really want to appreciate, um, you know, Dr. Shabazz, it sounds like you made some specific um, recommendations perhaps, and um, just appreciating that there might be a way for further um, consultation to occur between Dr. Shabazz or any of the other assembly members who would be willing um, to continue to explore the content of um, the Stolen Beam series with you both. So right. yeah, it goes without saying that that is uh, something we would appreciate and absolutely welcome. Yeah. Great. All righty. Well, thank you. Have a great rest of your week and thank you. <laughs> thank see you, you soon. Yep. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, um, Jennifer, are you back in action here? Okay. <laughs> great. Thanks so much. That's great. All right. So um, I think. I'm still on. Yes. Michelle. I think Jennifer is moving you. Um, okay. Sometimes if we're both trying it at the same time, it doesn't work. There we go. Um, can I just do a quick time check? What time does everybody have to be leaving today? I'm sorry. Yeah. I, oh. I have, uh, I, I had scheduled uh, something uh, coming up around 4.15. Okay, great. Um, and what about you, Dr. Shabazz? I likewise need to leave about then the um, UMass uh, Donahue Institute is having an open house and I promise to, to pass through there. Awesome, okay. And Hala and Yvonne, are you kind of in the same boat or do you have a little more flexibility beyond that? More flexibility. I'm, okay. Maybe till 4.30. Okay, so what I'm thinking then is if the three of us have until 4.30, let's save the, L, the letter of interest until the end. And if, if Dr. Shabazz and, and Irv are okay with that, we can talk about that and what that might mean in a second. Um, and then we can continue on with the discussion. I would like to get some, we don't have to fully unpack uh, the stolen beam and our thoughts around that at this moment, but because the Jones Library is going to start to market, if the African Heritage Reparation Assembly would like to commit to being a co-sponsor of that so that we will as an assembly show up on the marketing materials and what's going out to the community. And we can also send um, the materials out to our own communities. Um, I would like to make sure that we're on board with that. 
Um, so, um, Dr. Shabazz and Herb, would you be, how do you feel about myself and Yvonne and Hala finishing the letter of intent for the Mass Humanities Expand Massachusetts Stories grant together at the end of the meeting? Um, and does that work for you? Well, the, the question is, uh, do, you, do we have to have a vote in, in order to submit it? And if we do have to have a vote to submit it, we should do that now. Yes, I agree. I don't think we need a vote if we have a consensus, um, unless you all feel like you'd like to have it voted on. Um, I think what Hala put together was great. Um, I've I've added some to that based on the feedback I've received from assembly members. Um, and so I would pull that up a little bit later at 415 after we've done some of this other stuff. And then as long as you're okay with us submitting that, remember this is just a letter of interest. It's not the full application for the grant at this point. Fine with Dr. You. Shabazz, you good with that? Yes, I am. Okay, and you, I think you said you're fine with that too, Irv, right? Yes, I am fine with it. Okay, excellent. So um, then let's just have a brief conversation about the stolen beam and if we, if there are any thoughts to share in terms of how the AHRA can use um, the program and if you're all comfortable with partnering with the Jones for the series that they will begin in May. Um, which I believe is they, they're only opening it up to, I think maximum might've been 20 people I should have asked, but I think I saw 15 to 20 people um, will be able to sign up for that because it will be an in-person um, series, I believe happening at the Jones. So does anyone have an objection to AHRA being a partner in that? So my, um, no, real objection, whether in the, the what I understand to be um, activities, uh, 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 reading the syllabus or reading, using the stolen bean curriculum at the, and Jones Library, I guess, as a venue more or less. Um, my concern as to um, the promotion or the partnering or the endorsement just really concerns with, you know, I think it's wonderful if um, uh, um, the groups and, and that are curated or groups that come out are of whatever ethnic, uh, ethnic backgrounds. Um, I just, for myself, you know, recognize that for some members of the African heritage community, um, the the discussions the uh, and the framework of the discussion would um, may um, how do you wish to say maybe deeply emotionally um, uh, um, activating like activating yeah well. Um, the, um, you know, so there's there's one thing to say, you know, as a more academic approach, uh, and certainly I'm looking at just some of the classes and the questions are all fine. I don't have any anything, but I just feel as though you you might find yourself, one might find themselves in a dynamic where, um, and particularly where it could very easily be the case where you might be one or two or the, the only one or two of the 20 in the room of African heritage. And it's sort of like, you know, then people are looking at you uh, or, or as questions are raised, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you fit within, within the discussion? So, and again, I'm not saying that it has to be, um, that Af Af people of African heritage should not be in the groups in these discussions. I think that's on an individual to do. I just would be concerned where where people are that um, hopefully there are some, so there can be a, um, a trusting 
a trusting kind of circle created uh, similar to the way as we started our work, we took a moment to think about learning the ropes of, of, uh, of, of, of safely kind of communicating around um, uh, difficult issues. So I, I, that's about all I could say at this point. Thank you. And I think you're raising such an important point. And I, in the group that I facilitated, it was um, all of the participants, but one was white and the one that wasn't was African-American. And so um, it was interesting to sort of see the way that things were activated and to be able to hold the space for all of that. So I think, and I think Devorah and Jeff are also aware of that. Um, and we've had conversations about really, again, not excluding anybody, but really um, encouraging white folks to be part of this as um, an educational process that is really needed. So um, Hala. I 100% agree. I've been doing a lot of work around the post-traumatic slave syndrome and healing, Dr. DeGray. And um, I don't know that we could say, here's affinity, how you identify here, how you, like, do you identify as Af African heritage, do you identify, and then maybe a mixed group, but I, I think it is also, it would be important to me to have um, those options. And I don't know if the, the stolen green would allow that, but there is a lot of trauma activation and pain that comes up. And then when you're one or two, you know, it's like what we sort of deal with in Amherst anyway. So now we're recreating um, some of what we're, the harm that we're already going through. So thank you, Dr. Shabazz for bringing that up. And yes, that's just my two cents, two and a half cents today. Go ahead, Irv, I'm sorry, I muted myself again. I I would, I, you know, I, I strongly lean in the direction of having this with an all African American group and all white group because I, 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 I and because I think you know all of you know people all think that well all African Americans obviously believe in reparations, uh, and that is not true, not true at all, and so having the stolen beam as the um, sort of point of reference and an all African-American group would be quite interesting. And I certainly would love to see that happen. And I think Jeff is still listening in. So I think he has, um, and I know that he will um, communicate all of this to Devorah as well. Um, and I think that any sort of guidance that they um, could receive from members of the Black community, the African heritage community would be, uh, would be very much appreciated. And um, yes, Irv. One, one, one last thing. Um, a cousin of mine recently completed a five-year study of our family, um, both genetically and historically. And our, our family goes all the way back to Jamestown of the indentured servants who came over. Uh, that was very powerful uh, because from there, you went from indentured servants to slavery. Even though after they served their indenture period, they became slaves, an extraordinary event. So I know within our family, we're just discussing this uh, starting to discuss all of that and the meaning of all of that. Uh, and I have an extraordinarily large family. Um, but anyway, I think it's, when I see this, it, uh, the stolen beam in terms of where we are as a family would be extraordinarily, extraordinarily helpful as a way of centering our discussion. Thank you, Irv. Thanks for sharing that. A lot of people are, are doing that work these days and with so much available now to be able to go back and look at your history. It's really interesting. Um, Jennifer, I see your hand is up. Yes, I just, um, Irv, you had said that 
you um, thought it was important or wanted to encourage that all African American and all white? Did you mean as one group or met separately? I, I'm sorry. Oh, oh definitely uh, separately. Okay, I, thank I, you. I, I think it's separate groups. Uh, I think it would be just such a rich discussion among all African Americans using the stolen bean as a point of departure. Thank you. All right. So, oh yes, Dr. Spaus. Hey, I'm 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 in full agreement. I mean, there there are many um, good pieces uh, that are in it, and and many of the the framework of the questions. Um, some of the um, areas that may get a little more uh, veer a little more into um, religious discourse. Um, you know, is something obviously that has to be, um, you know, juxtaposed. I, I, I never forget one time we had invited some folks here on a part of an intergroup dialogue and we um, had, um, you know, some, some places to visit and whatnot and didn't really think through how um, some of it was you know, uh, several of the things we were doing were, were linked with more or less a, a Christian tradition, maybe a Black Christian tradition, but with a Christian tradition. And there were, there were members there that, you know, were, uh, oh, and we also took them up to the Peace Pagoda. And, uh, and so some of the ones from the Black Christian tradition were having a little problems with that. And then some of the ones who weren't from the Black Christian tradition were having problems with, uh, uh, with 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 some of the emphasis or some of the things that were coming through the Black Christian tradition, so um, I, it, things can be a little. Uh, sometimes folks aren't always maybe as ecumenical as we might we might hope they are, but um, uh, but definitely a lot of uh, great pieces. I like the point that was raised about being able to adapt it to adapt it to different audiences, different contexts. So in the language of uh, that I think Hala offered, you know, I think if there could be opportunities in the organizing of this for there being a, a night in the series that might be, or, or, or one series that's offered that's for specific affinity groups of, uh, of white people, of, of people of African heritage, and then also one of where it's an open call, it's mixed, you understand it's going to be, it's going to be on a mixed basis, then that's fine. Then, then if you gave those options, then people could, you know, you see where, where it goes. If everybody's fine going in, in mixed groups, uh, then that's fine. If some people would like to have a particular opportunity as white people to, to, uh, um, have these discussions and and with folks that you know like themselves or, or, or just learning or just maybe dipping their toe into this I think then there there could be good space for that and uh, and likewise within the African American community there are definitely a lot of things here that you know in, in in the African heritage community people are haven't necessarily read people haven't necessarily engaged or thought about I'm not saying at all like everybody who of African heritage is automatically an expert on all these all of these matters that are in the curriculum far far from it it just really is more has to do with more of an, an emotional, whether you create an emotional safe space to talk about what could be uh, deeply, deeply uh, emotional issues. Thank you. You know, I, I, I know that we're on a time constraint here, but one other question arises for me, and I've already asked uh, and, and discussed with Devorah and Jeff about this, because I had the same sort of sense that um, the way that uh, African heritage people may be activated or that having a mixed group could be challenging for certain people. The question I had was for a group that was African heritage only, would it also then mean having facilitators that were African heritage? Um, would that sort of coupling be, in your minds, important? And I'm very curious what your thought process is on that, because um, in terms of, again, we go back to this idea of, you know, Black people coming forward and doing work and not being paid for it and shouldering the burden for, you know, um, and so that was one of the questions I had, and I'm curious if there is any feedback for Jeff, who's still on the call about that. 
Anyone can jump in, yeah. Yeah, I think what's laid out in, in the, the deep study that folks in ZDEC ZDEC have, uh, have done, they are probably more than, than capable to, to facilitate the um, you know, delivery of the, of the stolen bean um, curriculum, uh, and especially if it would be either in a mixed group or in a, um, uh, an affinity-based group of, um, of, 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 of um, uh, non-African heritage people. Uh, so, you know, I think I don't I don't know that you necessarily need it paid or unpaid um, someone of African heritage to to uh, organize people to to discuss the curriculum. But what about for the specific groups that would just be for African heritage folks? Would it be most appropriate to have African heritage facilitators for those groups as opposed to white facilitators? Well, I, I think in, in some ways, yes, because if you're, um, you know, people talk about trauma porn, you know, and some folks might might sit there and you got a white facilitator bringing them a curriculum and then watching their their reactions as they go through, go through some things. No, nobody wants wants that. So so sure, it would be great if um, in, in, an, in an all African heritage. Uh, affinity based uh, uh, discussion of, of this that uh, that yeah the facilitators could be uh, people of African heritage themselves. This has always been the idea with the kind of chat and chew format that uh, that was recommended. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's, and it's, you know especially for Amherst, uh, especially after the black census and where we want to go with that. Um, the discussion among discussion of this topic among African Americans, I think is essential um, here in Amherst. So yes, um, it would be, I, the ideal situation would be that the um, facilitators were also Afri African American. Uh, and usually I wouldn't come down on that side, but with this topic, yeah. I believe that, um, especially in Amherst, and uh, it would be very, very valuable and powerful to have that. If we, if we could pull off a group of 20 African-Americans with this, as, as well as uh, facilitators being African-Americans in Amherst, that would be very powerful. Absolutely. Um, Yvonne, I'm gonna come to you, but I saw Jennifer's hand was up, so I just wanna check with you, Jennifer. Was that yeah? Yeah. Sometimes, when you, <laughs> like I'm not a member of the assembly, but I I'm like I, I feel kind of passionate. I am, but I'm not right. So <laughs> I actually went to a training the, the other day that was on race equity, and it was the lead worst two people who were white, and I just they were insensitive, not may, maybe purposefully, but they weren't able to adapt to the audience in the way that they needed to. So this the information that they would have wanted to get across was more insulting and on my ends. And I'm not saying that necessarily JCA would have someone who doesn't have the skill set come in, but um, it's, you know, and there's a, a part of it about being able to relate. Like we can sit here as mothers and tell other people what it's like to have a child, but until you go through that pain, you just don't really know what that is, right? Like there's, you, we can't explain that to anybody. So um, it, there's just a, an issue of relatability too that I think holds very strong. Absolutely, Yvonne. Yeah, I was gonna ask a question about. Um, I know um, Kathleen Anderson has a affinity group, and I'm wondering if that group is doing some of the work we're talking about as far as African Americans getting together and talking um, through these things. I'm under the impression or understanding that uh, mixed groups are also necessary to make, um, you know, to continue to have progress in this area, you know? So I think it's important for us to have our own groups, certainly what I'm calling an affinity group, which is we get to speak um, together and um, there is power and um, freedom in being able to organize, you know, within a, um, in our within our group, but I'm you know I got I got an a, 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 an invite from Pat Anonibaku for another group, and so I'm wondering these other groups that are 
meeting is that where this is happening and um should we get more information about those groups and also support you know this work you know that's happening within groups that are exclusively african american would anyone like to respond to yvonne's question i i, I um i'm gonna to have to leave but I, I think that yes you know there are all going to be all kinds of different groups out there having discussions the the, the, the value that i see in using a, a one particular format across all groups is that you have some uh, uniformity in terms of how uh, the material and questions and group process, et cetera, is, is handled. It doesn't mean that, you know, that's the only way to do it, but in terms of the way I feel is like, from what I know about the stolen beam, it's just an incredibly good way of getting to a lot of issues uh, amongst Blacks only in a Black only group and for a mixed group or an all white group. Uh, it's, so I, I see it as powerful. And I, I think that uh, if that, if, if, it, if, if uh, DeVore and Jeff go forward with this uh, and want to do some more training of facilitators, especially of African-Americans, uh, that you know, a call could go out for that uh, to happen. Anyway, I must I must go on. I really appreciate today's uh, discussion. It's been really great. Irv, just quickly, just want to make sure. So, if I'm hearing you right, you are comfortable with the HRA being in partnership with the Jones for their May series, and you would also like to see the HRA develop ways uh, to promote the stolen beam in affinity groups um, to be decided sort of and engaged by the AHRA out into the community. Does that sound That's, Yeah, right? that encapsulate everything I think uh, I'm, I'm saying. Thanks a lot, Michelle. For, great, thank yeah, you, or right. great to see you, yep. <laughs> All right, and I know that you had to also leave Dr. Shabazz. Did that sort of sum things up for you as well, what I just said to Irv? <laughs> no, I mean, with the, with the proviso for, um, you know, the, the, the different options uh, possibly being there, I'm not as, um, I, I liked what um, was said about it being a living document, being something that can be adaptable. You know, BAM has... Um, you know, the Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts was created for the purpose of getting to and, and to working within the African heritage community in Amherst to, pr to, to promote the, the reparations conversation and thinking about what it would look like. That's what, that's what BAM came about to do. We've just been a little bit of a, of a holding pattern for, for different reasons and particularly trying to see if there was any support coming from AHRA since there's supposedly these funds and gift funds and things to help the African-American community begin to do this. If there isn't, fine, we're going to move ahead without any AHRA support. But that's, that's really where, where we've been. Yeah, and just to speak to that, Dr. Shabazz, I know I owe you a response, um, and I, I, um, I'm going to put that on our agenda for next week, because I think you missed a meeting where we talked about developing, um, I think what we called an operating budget uh, for the AHRA that would it would sort of make it transparent to the community that from the 206,000 plus now, because there might be some gift funds in there, um, that we're setting aside X amount of dollars for an operating budget to do the types of things that BAM requested and that other things that we've talked about. So I'll put that on the agenda for next week. So just to <laughs> clarify that. <laughs> All right, thank you, Dr. Shabazz, if you have to leave, thank you. <laughs> Okay, now Jennifer, just okay. So we, <laughs> so now we don't have a quorum. People had to leave, but because we've already been discussing the LOI, is it safe for us to continue? They, we have consensus that we can submit the LOI. We didn't do a vote for that, um, so it would really just be about the rest of us now working out the details of that so it can be submitted by tonight. 
So I'm going to say that we should adjourn the meeting and then I'm going to, I typically wouldn't keep recording, but I'm going to continue to record just for transparency purposes, but we should adjourn the meeting because okay. um, Dr. Shabazz and Dr. Amilakar have, I mean, uh, Dr. Rhodes have left. Yeah. Okay. So we can adjourn then. At, wait, I have to do public comment. Um, we cannot adjourn until we do that. <laughs> um, so, oh, Yvonne. I, we were supposed to be done at 430. Yes. I don't know how, uh, how much more time is needed to. Uh... Yeah, let's, I have a good, I, I have, I think I have a thought. Let me just, okay. let me okay. just see if, because I have to pick up my son too by five. There's no more pushing it for us here. Um, so let's see if our, um, we do have one attendee. And if, um, if you would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand now and I will read quickly the public comment statement. Let's see. Uh, okay. Um, during the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair. Uh, the AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment, but we will listen closely. And um, you could raise your hand now if you'd like to make public comment. Okay, so it does not, appear that we have any public comments. So we're going to adjourn at 429 p.m. and um, Jennifer's going to continue recording and then a plan for the LOI. So I received feedback from Yvonne and then I received feedback about just a few minutes before our meeting tonight uh, or today um, from Alexis. And so I would like to be able to incorporate both of those pieces of feedback. I also went through and just sort of cleaned things up and, and got, um, let me see if I can, well, before I take more time, because I know we have to leave. Are you all comfortable with me incorporating Yvonne's feedback and Alexis's feedback into Hala's document, cleaning it up and submitting it tonight? Um, or would somebody else want to take that on. Um, I certainly don't have to be the one to do it, but I'm willing to do it and I will make can't sure. Really, well, I think we discussed this earlier because you can't make any decisions now. Can't make any decisions. Okay. But I thought that previously that you had said. I did. Um, and I would submit it, right? Yeah. So okay. I think that for those purposes, you're good, but please don't make any decisions. I just want to let everybody know that um, Ad Abdallah has come back yes. and I'm not sure what happened to Earl. There's lots of stuff going on and it's a beautiful day. So um, Abdallah is the project manager for the Crest program. And so he is our fund and grant guy. So it's really awesome to have him be part of the team. And he's pretty fantastic and he's doing the work with the numbers, which we definitely appreciate. So Abdallah, this is part of the AHRA members. Yes. Nice to meet you all. And sorry, I had to drop out. <clears throat> I, I had to go into the doctor's office for a bit. Anyway. Did Abdallah, did, were, were you, you were there for most of the first part of the meeting, right? You were- The listening? first part, correct. Okay, good, yeah. good. Thank you. Yeah, I heard uh, both, uh, both the presentations at the beginning. Awesome. Well, there was a great discussion. If you decide you want some late night TV, you can get the video and <laughs> listen to it. I, uh, I will definitely do that later just to catch up on, on it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bala. Yeah, thanks for being here. Um, all right. So if there isn't an objection to me doing that, I'm, and it, was there anything that you all wanted to add or make sure, or we good based on what you sent me, Yvonne, and um, was there anything else? We're good. All right, cool. Well, I will make sure to get it in. Thank you for all the work on it. I really appreciate it. And um, I'll send an email about our next meeting since we didn't get to discuss that. <laughs> hey, Michelle, I just want to give yeah. you kudos for remembering to promptly start and at what hour and at what time you started. I actually I said I was the like, time. oh, look. 
<laughs> First very good, time very ever. Good. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Jennifer's not, when you're here, I, I miss it. But when you're not, I'm like, oh, I've got to. <laughs> I, I was plotting that. to have my son unmute me if need be because I was driving. So uh, awesome. <laughs> Hala, thanks so much for your hard work on it. It really looks really good. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Great. Really great. And it was helpful to see your initial thoughts, Hala, and then how you put it into the format. So that was good to backfill. <laughs> All right, everyone. Okay. We'll have, have a great week and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.